Hi everybody, it's Todd Brandon, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use VBA to program a macro that will go through a list of values and search for a specific value that you specify. That was a little redundant, I realize, but it will uh, find a value that you specify, or a range of values, in fact, and delete those. And so, we're going, we're going to do, we're going to work with uh, a list of numeric values and then we're going to work with a list of text values. But before we get to that, if you take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that bell icon to make sure you get notifications of new videos, I would sure appreciate it. And please leave a comment below because I'd love to hear your feedback. So without further ado, let's get to it. So in this first example, we have all these numeric values. So it goes from um, a minimum of four down to, what do we got? Down to 1,245. Let's remove all values less than, let's say, I don't know, less than 30. So we've got several values here, less than 30. We're gonna see if we can't write a macro to remove all values less than 30. All right, so let's go to our v, uh, Visual Basic Editor. It'd be Alt F11. And in here, like I'm on book one, so whatever you might be using, um, just make sure you just find the project with your current file. I've got a bunch of add-ins and stuff here that won't go away. So um, what you can do is if, if you don't have a module in your workbook, and if you've just opened a new file, you won't, go to Microsoft Excel Objects, right-click, and go to Insert module and it'll bring up a new module just like what i have here and then you'll have this uh, blank editor here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start by naming the um, macro and i'm going to name it find and um, find and delete and then make sure you have your double parentheses and once you hit enter it will automatically autofill that in sub for you so I'm going to declare a few variables or dimension them. So I'm going to dim uh, WB as workbook. I'm going to set WB to equal this workbook. And then I'm going to uh, dim WS as worksheet and set WS to equal WB not sheets. Sheet one, as you'll notice our uh, sheet that we're on and that we're going to be working on is sheet one. So I'm going to go ahead and um, establish that. And then the next variable I need is going to be a variable for the last row. And that's basically to find and set as a variable this very last row of our range. So I don't have to hard code row 290. Um, I'll have Excel find that for me. And so back to the uh, macro, I'm going to dim L row as long and then l row is going to be equal to ws cells rows dot count one for column one end open parentheses excel up dot row and so all this is this uh, ws dot cells it's it's our worksheet that we're on and this cells rows dot count that's basically the count of total rows in the worksheet and so this cells property this first uh, argument is your rows the second argument is your column so column a is going to be column one this dot in excel up is basically the same thing as it's the automated action of if you were in, on the last row of the sheet doing like a, a control shift up so if i were to go down here we kind of show you let's go all the way to the bottom so I'm at um, row 1,048,576, which is the very last row. I'll do a control shift up. Actually, I shouldn't do control shift up, just a control up. And then it will get me to that last row. That it'll be the first row of data that Excel will run into if I'm coming from the very bottom. So that's how we find our last row in that range. And so the reason I do that is just a quick, kind of a quick, uh, side note on that the reason why i don't do from the top row and do a con like a control um, if i were to do control excel down um, it would get me to the last row but if i were to have blanks for whatever reason in this column it would stop before it got to the last row because it would stop at the first blank the cell with data before the first blank it encountered so 
that's why I do it that way. All right, so now that we've got all that set up, the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna dive right into the part that actually gets this work done. So it's gonna be a for loop. So it's gonna be for i. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and declare i as a uh, variable. Just good, good form, dim i as long. So for i equals l row two, two. Since we have a header here, the last row we need to evaluate is actually two, and I am doing it backwards. So I'm doing it from the bottom up, and so I need to put step minus one. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this next I. All right, so remember we're going to say, um, this basically says for each row, you're gonna step all the way through until you get to row two. We wanna evaluate each, uh, cell in that uh, column. So now we're going to do if cells i comma one dot value is less than what do we say less than uh, 30 20 or 30 we'll go ahead and do 30 then and then I'm going to go ahead and put an end if here now we're going to tell it what to do if that's true. So it'll be cells you can't do that, Gracie. So this will be cells i comma one dot entire row dot delete and then shift space shift colon equals XL up. And so what this will do is if it does delete a row, if that's true, if it finds a value that's less than 30, deletes the entire row, it's going to shift it up so it won't leave a gap in our column of values. And so I always like to put a little message box to indicate we successfully ran through the uh, macro. So I will put all values less than 30 have been removed. All right, cool. So let's run this. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Let's run it. All values less than 30 have been removed. All right, so let's check that. And sure enough, now we have no values less than 30. So pretty cool. So the next thing we'll do is we'll move over here to this um, column of string values. And so this will be a little bit different method or approach. So I'll do control shift L, uh, enable that auto filter. So let's say, so we have uh, several different categories here. Let's say we want to remove um, modern. So let's go back to our visual basic editor. Let's start a new sub procedure so i'll just go uh, below that last one we'll do sub find and remove categories all right so i'm going to copy and paste a few things here to um, reuse it's going to be basically the same concept to a large degree uh, i am going to change this to sheet two since we're now on sheet two and then add a few or add a couple of new variables to this. So I'm going to do a dim C as range, then dim F call as range as well. So this F call is going to be the, just the first column and set that to a variable. So the way I do that is this is actually a range. So I'm going to set F call equal WS dot range. This is going to be cells one comma one so it's going to start with cell a1 and then cells rows dot count column one and then we'll make sure we close that parentheses as well so this is getting a little bit hard to read so let me open that on up all right so and then um, just like before we also had our l row all right we're going to use a with block so with f call and then I need to make sure I'll do this end with. So it's basically saying with the first column selected, we're going to do a for i equals l row uh, two two step negative one or minus one, I guess. And then uh, this will be next i. All right. So in this case, we're going to set our variable c, which is a range, set c to equal, and it's gonna be dot find, I forgot to declare a variable in here. So hold on a minute, this is not gonna like me too much. Let me comment this out real quick. 
and back up a second. So find or see, I'm sorry, dim val as string. And then I have to set, or not set val, but val is going to be equal to the value that we want it to find so that we can remove that row. I totally got off my game, uh, got distracted there. So val is going to be equal to the string modern. All right, and it's in double quotes. Remember, it's a string. So, okay, so back to uh, my for loop here. Find val and look in colon equals XL values close the parentheses and then this is going to be if not c is nothing then and i need to end my if and this is basically saying so if it finds the value if it's not nothing and it actually finds the value on that row it actually finds modern now we want to take c which is the range dot entire row dot delete space shift colon equals XL up and we should be good there so um, I'm gonna do another message box and a little trick here is now that our value is actually set to a variable no matter what you set that to we can do this we can do message box uh, do, uh, double quotes all rows and then space a double quote close the double quotes and do an ampersand val and another ampersand open up uh, another double quotes and with a space it's going to say all rows containing modern have been removed all right so just a little trick there and actually i'm going to show you another trick in just a second where you don't actually have to hard code the uh, value we can actually retrieve that from um, say you put in this value into a cell in the worksheet. We'll set that here in a minute, but I'm just going to show you uh, how this works. So we've got our macro ready to go. So let's go ahead. You can hit F5 or just hit play. All rows containing modern have been removed. Okay, so let's go check that. Let's check our filter. No longer, we no longer have modern in that list. So cool. So the uh, trick I was going to show you was, let's say on our header row, we wanted to uh, put in a value here. So let's say we want to remove craftsman. So we'll put that in uh, cell C1. So what we need to do is just go back to our macro and then our val variable will now be set to an actual value in a range. And so that's going to be, let me just do this, dim val range as range. And then we're going to set val range equal to worksheet dot range. And we'll go ahead and just select C, what is that, C1? Yeah, now val is gonna equal val range dot value. And we can even double check that. So before we get started with any of the rest of our uh, macro, let's do a debug print val. And we'll just go ahead, and if you go in this little, uh, I don't know, this little column here off outside, just outside to the left, of your editor and left click you can set a stop and I can't spell so it's turning red on me telling me you've got a problem all right so what we can do here is real quick we'll look in the immediate window uh, we'll go ahead and hit play and it'll stop there and it tells me um, that uh, val is equal to that value craftsman so that is working so that's pretty cool let's uh, stop let's remove that stop and let's go ahead and run this and all rows containing craftsmen have been removed. So we can double check that with our filter here. It's been removed and just another cool way to uh, do that. So anyway, I know this video got a little bit long, but hopefully you found some value in that. Uh, I'll show you how to remove rows from a spreadsheet, one of your worksheets using VBA based on a specific value that you specify and again i think i was redundant with that as early in the video so anyway thanks for watching again please uh, take a minute to like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit that uh, notification icon so you get notifications of new videos when i upload them and thanks for watching have a great day see you next time